for one million of nature's most extraordinary creatures. Ants. They fascinate us. They build complex, organized societies. And we've always drawn parallels between their world and ours. It's basically an ant production line. So what can we learn from ants? One ant in two million, we found her. Nice. Fantastic. To find out, we've brought a working colony of leafcutter ants from the tropics of Central America. We've recreated their nest so that we can see inside. And for one month, we're going to capture every aspect of their lives. We'll track them. I mean, this is going to be great, though, because this is going to tell us what these soldiers are doing in the ground. We'll listen to them. Oh, that little chirp. Yeah. And get right up close to them. Ah, go. What's gone down the front? <laughs> We'll go beyond our own ant metropolis to meet some of the most impressive ants on the planet. It's not just a group of ants holding on to each other, it's a survival raft. It is, it's, it's a force to be reckoned with. And discover the surprising ways in which ants are helping us solve global problems. I'm an entomologist and even to me, what ants can achieve is astonishing. Our project will show their world as it's never been seen before and reveal what they can teach us about ourselves. Glasgow, not the natural home for leafcutter ants. But over four weeks, the Science Centre here will play host to our ambitious project. Our goal? To unlock the secrets of the ant colony. Well, the stage is now set for our remarkable experiment. It's hot and humid in here, and everything you see here is based on real life. Well, this is normally all you'd see of a leafcutter ant colony, the bit above ground ants taking bits of leaf underground. Now, like an iceberg, the main event isn't the bit you can see, it's what's happening beneath. And that's a part of the ant colony that even scientists like me very rarely ever see. In the wild, the leaf cutters dig huge underground nests. We've used their natural design to inspire our own creation. Down below here, underground, we've tried to recreate what an ant colony would look like. These boxes represent chambers in the soil, and the walkways are tunnels in the soil by which the ants can access all parts of the colony. But the leafcutters need more than just a nest. They also need to feed. We've built them a whole environment where they'll be able to search or forage for food, as they would do in the wild. We've got plants in certain areas joined up to a main foraging area with these walkways. Now in the real world, in the natural habitat, these would be creepers and other plants. Now as you can see, there are no ants on it yet, but there will be. In a short while, we'll let the ants loose over this whole new world we've built for them. And over the next month, I'm going to be really interested to see how they take control of it and how the colony develops. Joining me is Professor Adam Hart from the University of Gloucestershire. He's studied the leafcutters for over 15 years. He's helped design a series of experiments to uncover how the colony works. And the first thing he's going to do is help us see inside one of the boxes. Adam, what's happening inside the box there? Hundreds of ants are attacking this camera. Um, let's just try and wiggle it around a bit. Now, that box is absolutely swarming with ants. They, they don't seem terribly happy with you, your camera in there. No. This is my first glimpse into the hidden world of our ant nest. In the wild, this would be an underground chamber excavated by the ants themselves. 
and inside here is something vital to the colony. This grey material here is, is fungus, in fact, which they're farming inside their nests. And they're using those leaves that they cut to help them grow this fungus. Leafcutter ants, despite their name, don't eat leaves. They bring them into the nest as a food supply for this fungus. And it's the fungus that they eat. Our ants are farmers, and the fungus is their crop. This means I can see right into the nest. I can see the fine details of their normally hidden lives. This is just incredible. In among the fungus, the white translucent shapes you can see are the brood. That's the young of the colony, the eggs, larvae and pupae. Here we can see the adults attacking the camera, whilst in the background, the brood is whisked away to safety. All that brood, every single egg, is laid by one ant, the queen. She's hidden somewhere deep within the nest, and hopefully we'll be able to track her down later. Right now, I want to open up this box and get my hands on some ants. Just get a bit out. I'll try and avoid getting a big soldier. Try and avoid a soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't nice. like that very much. The soldiers, as the name suggests, are ants who protect the nest. They're big and they bite. I haven't managed to avoid a soldier. Oh, yeah. oh thanks. Oh, it just bit me. Thank you. There there's you a go. big one there. Yep, there's a big one. One of them has just bitten my hand. Ah. <sighs> wow. There is a ma There's a massive soldier. Oh, who has just found a crease in my skin. Yeah has sunk her jaws right into my skin. That's actually quite painful. Yeah, they're very, very now you good. Can, you can see why the soldiers are so good at defending the colony. Yeah. Adam, I think, I think I've had enough of holding this. Yeah. Yes, if you could scoop that out. The soldiers are just one kind of ant in our leafcutter colony. And the first thing that's really obvious when you look at an ant colony is that the adult ants seem to be of different sizes. Now, it's not because they're, they're not fully grown. It's because they are different casts of ants. And under here, I've got three different casts of worker ants. In the insect world, a caste system means that individuals differ in shape and size within a single species. So you can see the range of size from the very, very small workers to the middle-sized workers and the very large workers here. And they're different sizes for a good reason. Each of these casts of ants have a different job to do. I've already had a painful encounter with one of these, a soldier. That head isn't filled with a large brain, rather a massive set of muscles to power a fearsome pair of jaws or mandibles strong enough to cut through my skin. Going down the size scale, this smaller ant is called a media worker. These are the ants that collect and bring leaves back to the nest. Its serrated jaws are just the right shape for cutting into tough plant material. At the very bottom of the scale are the minima, the most numerous ants of all. These tiny nestmates effectively turn the leaves into fungus and tend to the brood. So the first thing we learn from our colony is that the labour is divided between all its members. Each cast of ant has a role to play. To allow us to investigate how all these different castes organize themselves and work together, we needed a supply of ants on an epic scale. Not just a handful bred in a laboratory, but a thriving, working colony from the wild. <laughs> 